Welcome. In this lecture, we're going to learn about ocean surface temperatures, about ocean heat, and how that all affects things like ocean sea level. Now, the temperature of the ocean is important because it determines the phase of the water. If it's too warm or wind strikes, you're going to evaporate, you're going to see water vapor. If it gets very cold, the ocean's going to freeze and you're going to have sea ice forming. On the other hand, if you warm up the ocean, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy to warm up the ocean, much more than for the atmosphere, which gives the oceans the st climate stability. Ocean temperatures are also important that control the radiation back to space and that way keep our planet in radiative balance. Finally, ocean temperatures are very important for the ocean ecosystem. Many organisms are adapted to a very narrow range of temperatures and if the temperatures move, you'll find new species, new areas where they can thrive. The global distribution of ocean temperatures is kind of determined by the tropics where you have most of the sunlight coming in, you get the warm, nice water, that's what we enjoy when you go on our beaches, do vacation, and then you go to the poles where the temperature is much colder and ice can form, and that's because you have more radiation out to space and not much sunlight to replenish that. In general, ocean temperatures are measured in degrees centigrade in the ocean, and they range from minus two degrees, that's the freezing point of temperature, to something like 30 degrees in the warm areas. Now, that's the surface temperature. It's affected by the sunlight as well as the ocean currents, and you get a nice structure where you have warm water going to the north and cooler water going to the east. If you look at the temperature now in the vertical of the ocean, now you find a fascinating phenomena that the warm ocean water that we know in the tropics is really only a very small lens at the top of the surface floating on the, on the ocean, and that is because ocean temperature control density. When the ocean temperatures become cold, it compresses and sinks down to the deep. So you see the deep waters forming, coming from the north, North Atlantic deep water, or from the south, Antarctic bottom water. But in the middle of it, you have that warm, nice layer that determines the ocean's stratification and is so important for many life forms. Now, as climate uh, becomes warmer, we see that the ocean energy tries to change. And if you compare the atmosphere and the ocean, they have different types of energy that it takes to warm. For example, if you want to warm the air, it takes about a thousand joules per kilogram to warm the air by one degree centigrade. If you want to heat the ocean, it takes about 4,000 joules per kilogram to warm the ocean water. So you see that difference in heat capacity, as we say, determines the ocean and the atmosphere and the climate stability. So the polar regions are special because these are the few regions where the ocean becomes so cold and dense that deep waters can form. From the north we have North Atlantic deep water and from the south we have Antarctic bottom water. If you take a closer look at the ocean temperatures, in particular the deep temperatures, and you do a census, you find that most of the ocean volume is really cold. Around 2 to 3 to 4 degrees Celsius is about 80% of the ocean volume is cold water. But now let's look at uh, how these large changes of ocean temperature, who are important for ecosystem, have changed with climate warming. As our planet warms, uh, we see that the atmosphere is heated, and also the ocean is heated. But a physicist will take a look and say, well, it's actually easy to heat the atmosphere because the heat capacity of the air is pretty low. It's a thousand joules per kilogram to heat the atmosphere at one degree Kelvin or Celsius. It takes about 4,000 joules per kilogram to heat the ocean. So it's a factor of four difference. Another way to look at that is it only takes three meters of ocean to have the same heat capacity as the whole atmosphere above it. So it just shows you how important the oceans are. And as the planet warms, we see that that warming is mostly done in the ocean. About half of it is in the upper thousand meters of the ocean and the other half is in the deeper parts of the ocean. But together, there are 90% of the extra heat that went into the system, and only 5% is heating the land, the cryosphere, and the atmosphere. Now, as the ocean warms, warmer water expands. And if it expands, it can't go down, it can't go sideways, it goes up. So all of a sudden, you see that the sea level starts to rise. Now, if you want to look at sea level in its average sense, it's actually determined by the ocean circulation. You find the red areas on the graph that determine high stands of sea level, and the yellow and blue areas that show low level of sea level. And the difference is on the order of two to three meters supporting currents like Gulf Stream and such. But now if you want to look at sea level, how it's behaving over the last 100 years, you see this well-known picture of sea level rise because of climate warming. Over the last 100 years, we've seen about 
15 centimeters of sea level rise globally. That might not seem much to you, because depending on where you live, you're far away from the coast. But if you're in a small coastal island, 15 centimeters of sea level rise already worries you, and when it becomes 30 centimeters or half a meter, it can be really devastating to your environment. Now, when we want to take a look at the regional sea level, how that has been playing out over the last 20 or 30 years, we have a very different story unfolding of us. Over the last 30 years, we've been able to monitor sea level by satellites. These are radars that look down on the ocean from the top. And when you take a closer look at how sea level has changed over the last 20 years, you see some of those red areas which show sea level has risen by more than three times the average global rate. While in the blue areas, for example, off the west coast of the US, sea level has actually dropped. So you can see, although globally sea level is rising, regionally it's a much more complex pattern determined by the circulation of the ocean, by the winds, and also regional heating and cooling. Now, in summary, ocean temperatures are key properties of the ocean system. They get moved about by the sun and uh, the clouds, but also by the ocean currents. But more importantly, it's really the heat capacity of the ocean that gives the ocean a thermal inertia, that gives us climate stability, and influences the evolution of climate. Warming and cooling of the ocean has led to expansion and led to sea level rise. And we see that sea level rise is not the same everywhere. It's regionally different. And for small coastal states, it's vitally important for their population. For northern states, sea level can impact our ability to dam uh, us against uh, storm surges. But they also determine how much salty water gets into our freshwater aquifers. So in large measures, sea level is a very crucial issue of the ocean as we think about the future of the ocean with climate change affecting us all.